use your imagination and imagine and visualize the uh, savings in all the, these junked, duplicated military systems. It's a big paranoia tax for nothing. We've spooked ourselves out and our planet's going down in flames and climate change. Nation against nation. Mm -hmm. The savings from uh, just global peace. Yeah. <sighs> Catch our evolutionary breath. The savings of that energy you know, would eliminate starvation, plagues, uh, thousands of kids dying for like, they can't get six cents a day for some diarrhea medicine, you know. Uh, and what about that climate change insurance, you know? Asteroid impaction uh, readiness. Hmm. Blindsided by an asteroid? Dinosaurs didn't like it and we wouldn't like it. Hmm. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to coordinate our meager leftover resources um, to rescue ourselves, the other animals, and stop polluting the earth herself. Uh, let's play a little spiritual game. How many nations can you name that have killed more than one million people during your lifetime? Hmm? Well, I'm old enough that uh, I could list uh, China killed one million Tibetans in 1959. Indonesia killed one million Chinese, 65. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cambodia killed two million of its own citizens in a macabre auto genocide. 1975 to 1979. Uh, you know, I, I visited the killing fields in Phnom Penh, and I went to the uh, prison the, uh, there, Kumar Rouge Prison, and uh, went through the torture prison where they tortured Confessions out of 17,000 Cambodians. And after they confessed whatever they were told to confess, they slayed them in their shack shackles, a little rusty metal frame. But hard to watch, hard to do, uh, hard to photograph, uh, for, you know, and the shopkeeper he sold film and guidebooks just outside the door. He, his face was so malformed from torture. Only five survived. One of them was a sketch artist. He uh, appealed to the vanity of the guards and they kept him around to uh, draw sketches of himself. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, start counting. The shameful track record of the nation states. You know, us brainwash-resistant, free-thinking, open-hearted earth people, we're desperate. Mm. For a higher kind of love. Mm -hmm. mm. Transcendent, transformed system of the one in the many and the many in the one. I light another candle in Ramakrishna's guest room, more incense, and focus on the essence of my meditation. Listen up. This is the nugget. We need both an earth people government and an infinite evolving fluid spectrum of exquisite 
free ethnic communities, functioning concentrically within and mutually supporting the big one, supporting the many small, the many small, supporting the earth government for the greater bliss of mankind and our living Gaia, the earth goddess. Uh -huh. Uh, Earth Goddess, I need some examples of, of free, exquisite ethnic communities. Bring it down to Earth a little bit. That one's good. Another one? Thank you. Uh, free ethnic communities. Oh, yeah, the Kabak tribe uh, in the re remote wilderness of northern Cambodia near Kok Lak. Uh -huh. um, these Earth people are pure animus, you know. Oh, they worship goat skulls, trees, and has nothing to do with Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism. Mm -hmm. And the tribal chief, uh, he said, look, I'll build you a hut. Just teach our tribe English. Exquisite ethnic community. Another um, scene in Cambodia, I took the boat from Batambang to uh, <coughs> Angkor Wat. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a tribe that lives on the water. They're floating. The, 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 little, the little houses are on rafts, and the rafts go up and down according to the Tonle Sop uh, level of the lake. It's a huge lake. It's like 200 miles, you know, south to north and 60 miles across. But what's happening is the Chinese have talked to the Cambodian uh, dictator, Hun Sen, former Kumar Rouge general and absolute hardcore dictator, you know. Uh, yeah, they gave him a bunch of money, and he's now damming up the Tol Tonle Sop Lake. It's going to, like, wreak havoc with this little ethnic community. But what can they do? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Well, after this blow up meditation, I realize that I'm kind of a big fish in a small pond here at Ramakrishna's wealthy estate, a cozy situation. But it seems like an abdication of my destiny as a world visionary. There is no time to sit under my mango tree and discuss words. Too many people are suffering all over the planet right now. I reject your paradigm, you Tibetans. Earth is not nirvana at all. Uh, so goodbye, my thick, uh, thick shaded mango trees. That's why yogis love them, because the leaves are so close together. <laughs> it's like deep shade. Um, yeah. Uh, global starvation. Climate refugee immobility poisons my peace. Horrifies me. Mm -hmm. Because I've voyaged the Orient long enough, young enough, to realize we Earth people are all a chip off the same soul block. Oh. And uh, if we hide from that essential oneness, if we just sit under our individual thickly shaded mango trees and discuss blah, 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 uh, wrathful other dimensional uh, demons. I call them astral assholes. Shall cannibalize our goddess Earth and subjugate our home planet for their dark lights and uh, well, that's until a wayward asteroid wipes us out completely. Yeah. Oh. 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 Ah. oh, where are the planetary poets with vision enough? Oh, where are the revolutionaries? We need an Earth people revolution. Get these nations working for us, not us working for them. 
I mean, where are the earth people with power enough to uh, bomb the whole planet with grain? 